getting to the top of this mountain is not an easy task I must say there's a quite a steep hill and uh, we're doing our best to actually uh, make it up this hill but I think we will it just takes a little bit of cardio a little bit of ingenuity and also a willingness to discover something new in this really beautiful beautiful hike <music> Hey guys and welcome to my channel. In today's episode, we're going to be actually going on a hike. It's going to be the upper trailhead, which is a really gorgeous hike that takes you to a really, really cool place. I don't really want to say exactly what it is, but it is magnificent. And this is the reason why I'm making a video about it. But also I wanted to uh, start the video uh, on this street because sometimes it's hard to find parking in LA well we're not really in LA but I wanted to show you guys the right street to park in and it's actually on Victory and Gilmore which is at the entrance of the trail and as you can see it's a very empty street there's plenty of parking but anyways with that with no further ado let's explore this hike is part of the Upper Las Virgenes Canyon Open Space Preserve and is a large open space nature preserve owned and operated by the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy spanning nearly 3,000 acres in the Simi Hills of western Los Angeles County and eastern Ventura County. Originally part of the Amundsen Ranch, this area was sold by Seattle-based Washington Mutual to the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy in late 2003. You guys are probably thinking that I always think about cars and parking lots but I must admit that we are in Los Angeles and since there's so little parking that's usually available I have to talk about it. So yes if you do go to this hike there is an actual real parking lot but you'll have to pay three dollars and as I showed you if you are just willing to park right outside of this hiking trail there's free parking so why pay three dollars to park when you can get it for free. The parking lot has room for buses and equestrian trailers. Parking is $3 for the day and passes are available through the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy website. Past the parking lot there is a bulletin board offering some historical info about the trails and next to it is a junction with the two main trails. The first goes due west to the preserve directly to Upper Las Virgenes Canyon and the trails of Chisboro Palo Camado Canyon Park. The second goes south through the preserve to the Lasky Mesa area and then onto Upper Las Virgenes Canyon. Doesn't it look gorgeous? This almost feels like we're in a western. Isn't it cool? Yeah, it's very dry and uh, it's uh, very specific uh, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, the fauna. Yeah, absolutely. And honestly, like for me again, I, I see everything with googly eyes because I'm from Europe. But this is basically what I envisioned America to be like when I saw it in the movies and when I see it in, in movies even nowadays. And this is, I think, what made people want to settle down in this large and vast country. All of this open plains and all of this beautiful nature. And yeah, once again, I can imagine that there's horses galloping through the mm -hmm. different prairies and, and people just trying to discover this vast land. And uh, obviously, well, people did settle down and they did they built huge and big cities not everything is beautiful like nature but at the same time i do say that luckily we do have trails where we can walk and we can actually kind of enjoy this nature like it was hundreds of years ago and even thousands of year, years ago don't you agree yeah you're absolutely right yeah <laughs> It's not much of a surprise that this land looks like a western movie because from the 1920s to the 1950s many westerns and other types of motion pictures were filmed here at the Lasky Mesa movie ranch area. These type of ranch areas were created in the 1920s because recreating the topography of the old west on sound stages and studio backlots was difficult. So the studios went to the rustic valleys, canyons and foothills of southern California for filming locations. Other large-scale productions such as war films also needed large undeveloped settings for outdoor scenes such as battles. This is something that I've always found fascinating in America is that often on the side of streets or properties we actually see fences and the reason that there are so many fences is well because even though this is an open trail and a public trail that people can go to well it determines the end of this trail the end of this property and beyond that well it's probably owned by somebody else so if you're ever on the 
freeway or uh, going maybe to Las Vegas a lot of times, you're gonna see a lot of property marks that are fenced out and you better not trespass them because, well, those are private properties. And even though it looks like nature, it looks like everything is open, well, it's not, it's private property. Speaking about fences and property, this trail is located in a preserve area which was inhabited for thousands of years by the Chumash Native American tribe. The Chumash had prior to European involvement at least one village on the land, Huam, a multicultural village where Chumash, Tongva, and Tataviam people lived. On Bell Creek beside the Scorpion Peak, a large rocky mountain on the property of El Scorpion Park is the reported site of the village. So even though this trail is beautiful and most people just think of it as a trail, I did feel it had to mention the Native Americans that used to live here and their history in this place as technically this was their land that was taken from them. I did mention that there was a surprise and I did come here with Denver at another time but I didn't take my camera and the surprise is right behind us in that little mountain right there there's a gap and there's a really cool thing and uh, do you think we're gonna make it do you think it's dangerous I'm excited to go there you know <laughs> I mean you know as a viewer you can uh, use your imagination to uh, think about what this caves look like mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we're going to explore it yeah. and I'm very excited about it. Yeah, and all I must say too is that all good horror movies start with some sort of dark place in a very remote area and we're going there. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> the peak of the mountain is pretty tall standing at 1,475 feet and it's called Castle Peak in English, which is the corrupted American form of the Venturenio Chumash name for the peak which they called Casele Eo Picacho. Climbing the South Rough Side Trail to the summit of Castle Peak is not for beginners and is considered challenging. This peak is one of nine alignment points in Chumash territory and is essential to maintaining the balance of the natural world. Because of its height, gorgeous views of the canyon can be seen from various viewpoints as well as distant homes and the city landscape. All of this to say that even though parts of the trail are a little challenging, it is well worth it just to be able to see the gorgeous view. We made it to the cavern. It looks so crazy and big. I don't know if the images can actually show it, but it's humongous. And when I look at this kind of stuff, it almost makes me think of cartoons like the Flintstones and how maybe people lived back in those days. Well, when... yeah, they were going to become like cavemen, like mm -hmm. an explorer inside. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We came here uh, one time and I remember going in there was kind of scary because I yeah. started hearing stuff. <laughs> And, and this is maybe also the kind of place that maybe some people might be scared to go in because it does take a little bit of a climb to, to get in. So it is a little bit dodgy, but uh, it is really worth it. And, and as he did say, we can imagine cavemen living in these kind of caverns because it is kind of like a house. The cave is known as the Cave of Manitz. This is the believed cave of mythical Chamash shaman who was killed after murdering the son of a Chamash chief. This cave also appeared in the films The Canyon of Missing Men in 1930 and Tarzan and the Golden Lion in 1927. The cave Munitz is only about 15 feet wide, but once inside, there are impressive cathedral-like ceilings and quite a lot of life inside this place. Many birds reside in the cave, but looking at the amount of bird feathers that can be found on the floor, predators must also be a threat to them. Climbing up the Rocky Mountains, we stumbled upon a beehive which was beautiful but also eerie to hear as the buzzing of the bees combined with the echoing of the birds made for a very scary atmosphere. We conquered this cave and the sun is setting down, so I think that this is probably a good place to end the video, right? Yeah, absolutely. It was a great uh, hiking day. Yeah, a little bit scary, not, not too scary. We saw a lot of cool little things and as you guys saw, nature in California is amazing, but uh, yeah, with that being said, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did enjoy it, please be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, leave me a comment too. Let me know if there's other hiking places that you'd like me to go hiking at, maybe in California or other states too. And if you enjoyed having uh, Denver here in the video, well, he's more than eager to make more videos, come on hikes with me, go on adventures. So uh, let me know in the comments. With that being said, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next video. See you soon. <laughs>